Hey everyone, this is Nemo and welcome to another awesome video tutorial. So, well, websites need to be updated and when it's about core functionalities or the whole template, you really don't want to show the mess to your customers. That's why it's always a good idea to clone your live store to a testing environment and work on that to later update the live again after all of the troublesome uh, part is done. So in this video, we will see how to clone a live PrestaShop or 30Bs uh, website to a development environment. So let's get started. I will use this demo site I have here and clone it to a subfolder on the same domain or well subdomain in this case. Um, we have to clone both the files and database. So I will proceed with the latter first. I have a cPanel running for this site. So if you're a Plesk user, you will have to find out where the various things are located in that. Now, the first thing you want to do is check the database name and um, you can find it in uh, config settings.ink.php for PrestaShop or 30Bs. PrestaShop, of course, uh, 1.5 or 1.6, not 1.7. Now, I will use PHP my admin, so I'll click on it. Okay, so I could simply get away with uh, exporting the whole database together. However, depending on the site's traffic and catalog size, the dump can really become huge. So um, what I do and what I recommend doing is um, when you export, click on custom and you can see we're given a list of table. Given that you might have extra ones depending on your third party modules, there are few standard tables to avoid dumping because of their size. So uh, for those, we will only export the structure. And you can see we have structure and data here. So I will look for PS2Z uh, in this case because it's the table prefix. Connections and I will not export data, connections page and connections source. These tend to be the uh, larger ones together with PS whatever guest. So this works for medium stores, but if you have more than a few thousand products along with combinations, it might not be enough to generate a small enough dump and you will have to break it up in more chunks. So basically selecting uh, only a few of these each time and then putting them back together when you import. So to find out the larger tables, we can reach back the structure tab. But first, let me just save this dump. And I'll call it tutorial.sql. Save. Okay, so the download is complete and once again, if the export is too large and you see it flies over say around 50 megabytes, then you want to make sure you only export a few tables each time. So to keep track of them, just reach the structure of the database and then sort by size here on the right hand side. You can see it's sorting by largest, uh, from the largest to the smallest table. Uh, in this case, it is not the connections because this site is basically unused. So there is no uh, real data um, to display here. So the question comes on its own. Why am I not using the copy uh, or clone database function that's built into phpMyAdmin? Well, in my experience, when it doesn't directly directly break during the cloning process, it really creates a corrupted copy. So that's why I'm not using it um, usually. So once everything is saved, we can import the tables back into a new database. So I'll create it with a database wizard from cPanel, MySQL database wizard. And it's gonna be press the shop, uh, whatever, something. Uh, well, let's call it tutorial since that's how I called my export tutorial. And let me just so it's uh, Presta Shop or or Presta SH tutorial. 
and the username is going to be I'll just write it here and then copy it usr so user password I'm going to use the password generator here I copied it and of course make sure you you save it and then I will create this user save I will assign all privileges to it and then complete okay so I will now go back to my databases uh, view in PHP my admin I'll refresh it and you can see PrestaShop tutorial is now here it's going to be empty of course so what we want to do is just import our previous database into this so I'll go to import and now we'll choose my file take a note of the maximum uploadable size here since in my case is 105 megabytes it might be smaller on your server so uh, just take account of that and I will choose my tutorial.sql file open and then go and then I will just let it run and resume the video once it's complete okay seems like it was correctly imported so I will go ahead and change the PS or whatever the prefix is shop URL table since this has to redirect to our new folder so shop URL and I want to change my physical URI to the folder uh, the name of the folder where I'm going to copy the main site so I will call it um, dev and that's basically it for the database now the files my general workflow involves compressing the main folder moving the archive and decompressing in the new folder again a few things to consider if your site is large the first is cache um, the cache folder can become huge like really huge so you may want to keep that out of the zip images can be an issue as well so it's better to leave out the IMG folder too and if you want to be extra sure about the site size and which folders are the heaviest you can use the disk usage here uh, the checker from uh, from cPanel so again just click on it and you can see it's showing me the distribution of um, the allocated space on my site so if I open up the public HTML folder where press the shop is you can see apart from me having uh, other press the shop instances the image folder is uh, considerably large even if I have a few products in it and the cache one as well it can be bigger of course like the admin in this case is bigger again this is just a test website but you will see if you check your live store the image folder depending on the number of products and the cache folder depending on the visits you have and the modules you have installed are gonna be large so back to uh, cPanel now so I'll access the file manager and also another th uh, thing to consider is uh, the available space because you have to make sure you have enough space for the original site the zip and the clone site together which is close to three times the original site uh, or well at least two and a half depending on the compression uh, you're using so let's zip it up I will reach my uh, site here and I will exclude the folders that I know I will not use in this case demo is just another instance of presser shop so I'll check all the folders I need again I'm copying them all since this site is very small it's basically unused but make sure you do not copy that um, image folder along with cache if you have a large site All right, this should be everything for the folders I need. So I will just click compress right here. I'll use a zip archive and then compress files. This is going to take a while depending on the size of the compressed files. 
good. Now the next step is to create this new folder and we saw I called it dev in the database so we'll call it dev here as well. Create new folder and what I want to do as a very last step for moving the site is moving the compressed folder into it. So it's called adapter and you can see it's very small in this case because again the site is basically vanilla. So I will move it to public HTML dev and then I will access dev and I will extract it again using cPanel. Great. So the site is now almost completely cloned and if you need product images at this point you can compress the whole image folder separately and use the same procedure we just went through. Uh, if not, follow along. So uh, I don't need to do it here but basically what I would do is create an image folder here like we created the dev one then I will access it and pretend I have the compressed uh, product folder here, product images are contained in the P folder. So I would go back to the original site, compress P, and then I would uh, decompress it here and see if all my images, or at least a good number, are in the proper place. If you don't need it, just go ahead and, I mean, if you don't need the, um, the product images, which are by no means required to run a clone site, um, just compress everything here, basically select every single folder and skip P. Depending on the number of categories you have, you can also skip C, which is the category image folder, as well as S, uh, which is, sorry, uh, SU, which is suppliers, if you have many, and M, which is manufacturers. But you will need uh, basically all of the others. Um, CMS is containing the CMS images and it should really not get too big even if you have a blog. For the cache, let me go back. So again, pretend we didn't copy this, I would create it like we did, then access it. And given that the bulk of it is inside Smarty, you can go ahead and copy all of these from the original site and then paste them here and then create Smarty, and then inside it create cache and create compile. This is, um, let me show you again, cache and compile are the folders that should fit inside Smarty. So just make sure you recreate the same folder structure in case you did not copy it over as a whole. So that's it. What's left now? Well, we need to connect this new site to the clone of the database we just added. And as you know, the credentials are stored in config settings.inc.php. So I will edit this file. Now let's see if the code editor runs fine here. Well, it doesn't, but you can see it's connecting to my uh, previous database. So I will grab those credentials I saved before and I will paste everything. Okay, then I'll save changes, and basically that's it. So let's try to access the back office of this new site and see if it works. So I just got my credentials. The site's um, the back office is located at site name slash uh, admin123. So my main site is press the shop. Liaisondev.com, and this again, this was the site that I cloned. So my new one, my dev site is slash dev slash admin one two three. Okay, it looks like it's carrying over the login that I had on my previous site. You can see it's it's pretty broken. This is because I guess um, I'm just guessing. Yes, I forgot the uh, the backslash at the end of the physical URL here so it's it's really needed R let me just refresh again and yeah that was it so basically uh, this is our clone site I will just reach my preferences SEO and URLs 
and regenerate the HD axis just make sure everything is fine here so I'll save to make sure the HD access file is regenerated and I can access my front office so my shop let me, let me actually just get rid of that um, I don't think it's needed here let's see yeah okay so something seems broken now let's debug because these things happen when you clone a website and I believe it's not grabbing the correct folder it's probably cached so if I go to advanced parameters performance let me see if cache is enabled here yeah it's set to never recompile template file so let's see if clearing cache helps because again I copied the whole cache folder so chances are everything has been moved over as it was well it seems like it's still broken so let's see what's going on here because this is probably something you're gonna go through as well so my CSS files are cached let me just get rid of CCC all together and see if that helps because this file is regenerated once you uh, disable the option yep that was it so uh, again if this happens to you just make sure you disable CCC you can just re-enable it again and it should work hopefully unless I'm so unlucky that I grabbed a broken site that I broke myself but uh, yeah so it's there's something wrong with my cache here uh, it's it's just broken on its own you don't have to worry about it it's uh, if if it works by default it should really not uh, affect your uh, your system just in case I want to go through it and and see if we can get it fixed okay so we're back and I digged into the problem it turns out it's actually a bug affecting my version so if you're using 1.6.1.5 which is the version I'm using in this demo you will notice CCC doesn't really work if you use subfolders and to fix it what you want to do is reach the folder you'll see now on screen so classes media.php and open it up and uh, this is where the problem is around line 597 you see the URL is being assigned and it's not considering subfolders so what I did was copying it from the newest PrestaShop version at the time of this recording the newest 1.6 which is 1.6.1.7 and just replace it so if I uh, I obviously use FTP for this but this is this is not something that should happen to you unless you use the same version so if I go back and I refresh now I might have to restore the cache as well but no you can see it works perfectly so that's it this is not a usual uh, issue you run into this is a core bug but I'm glad I could address it so if you use the same press shop version just be aware of that um, that is what might happen if anything else goes wrong and uh, sometimes it is as you could see well troubleshoot so the common issues are uh, tables that might have been forgotten or the cache or any cache module being stuck all right so I guess that's it for this tutorial you see just just uh, in case you're wondering this really is that site um, that site uh, I had before this is the original and this is the clone it's uh, it's in the proper directory so yeah this is everything for today's video I hope you found it useful and if you did please subscribe the channel and follow the blog at nemops.com for other great PrestaShop tutorials and tips thanks for watching I will see you next time